what we're going to do here is find the extrema on a certain interval, which is closed, and we're going to apply the first derivative test on this function to find our relative mins and maxes, and then we're going to apply our second derivative test to also confirm whether these are relative mins and maxes. And we're also going to describe our intervals, whether they are increasing, decreasing, whether they are concave up or concave down. So let's do all of that. So let's get right into it. So if we were to find the extrema on this interval, we have to find our critical points. Now find our critical points, we have to take the first derivative. So we have dy over dx is equal to two minus one over x squared, which if we simplify by finding a common denominator, we get two x squared minus one over x squared. Now we only want to set the numerator equal to zero and not the denominator, because the denominator would give us an asymptote and we don't want that. So when we have two x squared minus one, we have two x squared minus one equal to zero. So if we move the one that over here, and then we divide by two, we get x squared is equal to one half. So we have x is equal to plus or minus radical two over two, because that's basically one over radical two, just changed. Now, if we look at these numbers, are they within our interval? No, we're not, they're not in our interval. So we can't consider these for our extrema. So the only points we can consider for our extrema is x equals one and x equals two, which are our endpoints. So if we do f of one and f of two, we're going to evaluate these and this will give us a min and a max. So f of one, we get three, and at f of two, we get four plus one over two, which is basically nine halves. So this is our min for this interval, and this is our max for this interval. So that's done. So let's apply our first derivative test. So we just said that dy dx is equal to two x squared minus one over x squared. And we said our critical points are at x equals plus or minus radical two over two. And we said x equals zero is an asymptote. So I'm gonna put asymptote right here, right? So if we wanna do the first derivative test, we're gonna draw almost like a number line and we're gonna start labeling. So we have x is equal to negative radical two over two, and we have an asymptote at x equals zero, and then at x equals radical two over two, we have both of these right now, they have a slope of zero at that point. That's what it means to have a critical point. So let's basically, whatever we see in between these is our intervals. So we have one, two, three, and four. So we have four intervals we have to describe here, right? So once we describe them, we can find whether these are relative mins or maxes. So if we have anything that's less than negative radical two over two, so let's say we have negative two. If we put that, well, negative two, so we have two over negative two squared minus one, right? And the bottom is always positive because it's an x squared. Well, look at here, it's, this is also squared. So whatever input we put for x, it's always going to be positive because it's squared. So we just get equal to four, right? Well, we get two times four, essentially minus one. That's gonna be a positive number. So anything that's less than negative radical two over two is gonna be a positive number. If you have anything in between negative radical two over two and x equals zero, so say we have like x equals 0 0.1, well that gives us two times essentially point or negative point 0.1 squared, and, that, and then that's minus one. And this is gonna give us a really small number but it's going to be negative. So our first derivative is gonna be negative in between these numbers. Same thing here, if I put a really small number like 0.1, it doesn't matter if it was negative 0.1 or 0.1, they're both squared, so it's still going to get basically an even function here. We have 0.1 squared, we have basically 0.01 times two minus one, that gives us a negative number. And then if you have anything greater than radical two over two, so like 100, we essentially have a positive number on top. So this is positive. So what do those all mean? This means that whenever we have positive for our f prime function, whenever it's positive, it's increasing. And then whenever it's negative here, it's decreasing. So that just means that our slope here is pointing upwards, it's going up, and this slope is pointing downwards. Now, when we transition from a positive to a zero to a negative, that means we are increasing, 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 then we stop, we have a horizontal tangent at x equals zero, and then we start decreasing. So this is a relative max. So 
So here we can just call this a max or a relative max. And then when we transition from a negative to a positive, we're going, we're decreasing, 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 and then oops, now we got a horizontal tangent where our slope is zero, and then we start increasing again. So this would be a relative min. So this is a relative min. And then when we have a negative to a negative, well, this is an asymptote. So we're just basically decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And we have an asymptote, and then we're decreasing again, again, and again. So this is not going to be a relative man, min or max. It's just an asymptote. Now, say, for example, this function right here, we have a negative to a negative. If we went like this, where we have a negative slope and then another negative slope, and we have a zero here, this is neither a relative min or max. Despite being a critical point, it is not a relative min or max. So this is basically our function right here. So we describe that these intervals, if we were to put them into words, we have negative infinity to negative radical two over two. And we said this is increasing. And then we have negative radical two over two to zero. This is decreasing. And then zero to radical two over two, we said is also decreasing. And then radical two over two to infinity is increasing. So these are our intervals. Now, if we wanted to use the second derivative test in order to check these extrema, we could. So we have to find the second derivative at that point. So we know that our second, our first derivative is y prime, which is equals to two minus one over x squared. And I'd like to keep it that way because this is going to make our second derivative easier. We do y double prime, which is d, and this is also equal to d squared y over dx squared. If you ever see that notation, this is going to be the derivative of this. So this is negative x to the negative 2. So if we, multi if we take the derivative of this, this is going to give us 2x to the negative 3, right? So our answer here, and this is a constant, so it goes away. So you have 2 over x cubed. This is our second derivative. And we had our critical points at x equals plus or minus radical 2 over 2. And our x equals 0 is an asymptote, so we can't really check the concavity for that. But let's check the concavity for these. So if we have 2 over and then radical 2 over 2 cubed, all right, so this is at x equals radical 2 over 2, this is going to give us a positive number, so positive number. So that means this is concave up. So if it's concave up, it's going to look like this. The concavity is pointing upwards. This is going to give us a relative min. And look, if we look over here, we did describe this as a relative min. Now let's check at uh, 2 over negative radical 2 over 2 cubed at I'll just put at so that we know what point we're working with. This is going to give us a negative number, right? So that means our concavity is pointing downwards. So this looks something like this, where the concavity is pointing downwards. So this must be a basically relative max. So this here is a relative max. And if we check our first derivative test, which we did, we did classify this as a relative max because it went from increasing to decreasing. And when your concavity is downwards, you're going from increasing to decreasing, right? So we just use the second derivative test to define these as either relative mins or maxes, despite already doing the first derivative test, but it's just for the sake of clarity and seeing how to do that. And then the first derivative test told us what our intervals are like. So our intervals were in between our critical points and we had these four intervals, and we said whether they were increasing or decreasing, and we marked them by plus or minuses. And then we also found our extrema on a certain interval that was given to us, which is one to two. And we had to check our critical points and whether they actually fit into our interval.